Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Welcome, everybody, to this very first special edition of Rapture Watch. It's the Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth Bible Study, and I uh, had this Bible study on Sunday with my home church group, and I wanted to have this up for you guys so that you can follow along at home. All of you who cannot make it to my home to do the Bible study, um, but also for all of uh, you guys who did attend, you guys can um, refresh yourself for next Sunday. And for all of those uh, who couldn't make it then are going to come next Sunday, then they can catch up. I'm going to do this every single week, and I want to... Um, yeah, just do a good job and have as much scripture as possible so you guys can, uh, you know, look it up and follow along. This is not my opinion. I'm going by the book, and it's so important that we always do that and trust the Word of God over man, and um, that's the main the main thing. And I was talking to uh, my friend Carrie, who was at the meeting, and... I was saying I'm, I was kind of nervous about doing the teaching, but as long as I let the word speak for itself and I just fill in the blanks by, uh, you know, going to the next scripture or whatever, then I can't really screw up because the word of God is leading in the Holy Spirit. So that's what uh, I pray this is. I pray that this is um, spiritual food for you guys and it's the Word of God, not my opinion. So uh, the very first lesson I wanted to have is rightly dividing the Word of Truth. I think it's incredibly important that the first home church study, we, we lay a foundation that is rightly dividing, and then every other study after that, we can know the context of where we are in, um, in Bible history. And we can uh, really understand so much more from what Jesus was saying versus what Paul's saying and how we fit in. And there's so much that we can understand once we get this concept uh, firm in our understanding. All right, so as you guys heard at the beginning of this video, I put Second Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 15, and... Uh, study to show thyself approve, a workman that need, need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so this is the heart of my home church and uh, of every Bible study. And I certainly uh, want this to be the foundation of any teaching that I have because it is extremely important that we don't turn the Bible into a milkshake, that we understand each dispensation, each uh, person and who they're speaking to, the context and everything. Um, it is so important. And we know that we absolutely do follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We don't throw out the rest of the Bible. Uh, every single uh, scripture is important. And that's why we are going to go now to uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3 verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. So, like I said, uh, all scripture is powerful, important, and we must uh, rightly divide to fully understand. You know, they say in real estate, real estate that it's location, location, location. Well, in Bible study, it's context, context, context. We must remember where we fit in and who the people are talking to in the Word of God. So, forgive me, I have to go to my notes here. Okay, so the very first thing we have to really wrap our minds around, and it's it's hard for a lot of people these days to understand this, um, 
that Jesus only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel originally to, to, to fulfill the Old Testament promises. We can see this in Matthew 10, verse 5, when he was sending out his apostles um, to preach the kingdom gospel. And in Matthew uh, chapter 10, verse 5, we have these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, this is one scripture that's very important, that the Lord did not send forth his his disciples to any of the Gentiles. He sent his disciples only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Jesus himself in uh, Matthew 15 verse 24 states himself this same thing. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. All right. So the next scripture I want you guys to pull up is Romans 15 verse 8. And this is where Paul clearly shows that Jesus Christ was sent to the Jews only when he was in his earthly ministry, when he was in the flesh, okay? And, you know, they refer to Jews, uh, Paul refers to the Jews as a circumcision. And when Paul refers to Greeks or the Gentiles, he refers to them as the uncircumcision. So this is a scripture that is clearly going to show that Jesus came for the Jews. Now in Romans 15, verse 8, if you have it pulled up, it says, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So this clearly shows that God promised the Jewish people a uh, Jewish Messiah who would, who would come to fulfill the promises. They rejected the Lord Jesus, so now it turns to the Gentiles. Now, a lot of people will teach replacement theology. I do not subscribe to replacement theology. I believe the Jews are the house of Israel. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. We are the bride. We are different. If you uh, checked out the Romans 8 study, you know that we are in Christ. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk um, not of the flesh, but of the spirit. We have the spirit of God dwelling in us. We are a different um, we are a different dispensation. All Messianic Jews who accept Jesus Christ, who receive the Holy Spirit of promise, and all of the Gentiles are of the church and of his body. And in any marriage, we become one flesh. Okay, that's why God is so strict about marriage, okay? When you become one flesh, you are one uh, one being, and, and only death can separate those people. Obviously, in this day and age, we have so many people divorcing, but that's not what God wants. God wants one flesh, one marriage, and... Um, and it's so important because it represents the church and God's faithfulness to us and how he's not going to abandon us. He's not going to divorce us. And he still hasn't divorced Israel. Okay, they may be uh, unbelieving right now and um, they're being they're being Jacob right now, but he will bring them home and he will he will turn his attention, his full attention back to them during Jacob's trouble. And that's why it's so important that we get dispensations, because if we don't get dispensations, we can get completely confused about uh, other mysteries in the scriptures like the rapture. Okay, so it's extremely important that we understand this. And we know that Paul is the only apostle for the Gentiles. And I'm going to have you guys look up Romans 16, verse 25, Colossians 1, 24 through 29, and Ephesians 3, uh, 1, verse 7. So first we'll go to Romans 16, 25. Now, to him that is of power to establish you according to my 
gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Okay, this is clearly showing that Paul has his gospel and combines the, the, the teaching of Jesus Christ that he taught to the Jews. But he was the one that was given the mystery, the mystery of the Trinity or the Godhead, whatever you want to call it. The mystery of the rapture, the mystery of, of the body of Christ. There's so many mysteries that Paul received that no one got. No one received this information. It was hidden. And when they say mystery in in the Greek, it's it's different. It's not like a, a mystery novel type thing that we, we kind of uh, perceive it as. A mystery just means a secret that is now revealed. It's a secret that is revealed to us. And in Colossians verse 1, 24 through 20, 29... It reads, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind for the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from from generations, but now is made manifest unto his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. You see, Paul always had to reaffirm himself, because in that time, you know, what he was saying uh, was, was so hard for the Jews who were told never to mix with any Gentiles were ne were told to never even go into the house of any Gentile okay and even when Jesus was here he said don't go to the Samaritans and the Samaritans were were half Jews they were they were with Gentiles and they were not really looked upon as good people in the eyes of Jews because they were always supposed to be separate they were not supposed to um to get involved because god knew that they would get into idol worship and pagan stuff but also there was a time when we would be allowed in when the spirit of god is going was going to be poured and is being poured right now upon all flesh you know a lot of us um, know that this is uh, dreams and visions are coming to so many people who aren't even in Christ. But this is clearly a reference also to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit um, being in all flesh, not just the Jewish people. Okay, this is a free gift of God for all people to receive. And so it was uh, it was something that the Jews were, were really not a big fan of us uh having this this gift you know and so a lot of them were were going around and were were um trying to mess up Paul's ministry and teaching people that they needed to be circumcised that they needed to uh do all of this uh feast stuff and that's why another another reason why there's so many people doing um you know, I'm not going to say anything totally wrong about Hebrew roots, but the fact of the matter is, is that we are spiritual Jews. We're not physical Jews, okay? Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. We don't have to learn Hebrew and to know, uh, to speak and call him Yahshua, okay? We, if we want to, that's fine. But the the simple fact of the matter is, is that the Lord uh, chose the Greek for us because he wanted to reach more Greeks, he wanted to reach more Gentiles. So using Jesus Christ 
as uh, the name of, of our Messiah, our God, uh, is not um, is not wrong. So if anybody tells you you have to call him a different name and and learn how to say it in Jewish, that is not true. Okay, the power of the name of Jesus Christ has shown up in my life many times when I've been in trouble. Okay, I've called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and his name is powerful. So don't let anybody tell you that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is not power. That's why they're taking it out of schools. That's why they're trying to, to um, you know, quiet that name down. And I think it's, a, it's another attack from Satan to trick Christians into saying, we can't say Jesus Christ. Okay, so so don't buy into that. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ as Jesus Christ, then call him Jesus Christ, okay? And there's also Emmanuel. You know, nobody said, calls him Emmanuel, but in the scriptures, I have not seen one scripture that that's calls him Yahshua, okay? He calls They call him either Emmanuel or Jesus Christ. And I don't see anybody calling him Emmanuel or, or making everybody call him Emmanuel, okay, which is God with us. But anyways, I'm going on a little bit of a rant there. Um, so we are now going to go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. Uh, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of grace of God, which is given to me, to you, word, uh, how that by revelation he had made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, and is, and it is how revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the, by the gospel, whereof I was made minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. So this clearly shows that he says many times here that he is the minister for the Gentiles. Jesus was the minister of the circumcision, and he clearly states here that he is the minister to us, to us Gentiles. Okay, this is uh, very, very clear. Okay, and we must totally understand this to, to even get started. Okay, with all that being said, uh, we understand that Paul has clearly said that he is the apostle to the Gentiles. And he did not go straight to uh, Judea when he was enlightened by the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. You know, he did not go there. He he went to Arabia and then, you know, started his ministry. And there was a lot a lot that he did before he went back to Judea. And when he did, he was with James and the rest of them and they clearly agreed that he was going to be the minister of the uncircumcision, and they were to the circumcision. And we can see that in Galatians uh, chapter 2, verse 7 to 9. So let's uh, turn there now. But counterwise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was to Peter, for he that wrought affectionately in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mightily in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. So we can see here, clearly, that the book of James, Hebrews, and many other scriptures that are not written by Paul, are to the Jewish people. And dare I say, even Revelation was not written by Paul. There was many revelations given unto Paul, many mysteries that were shown, but revelation was given unto John. So we understand that all scripture is good, 
and we must know all scripture and prophecies that were written to the Jewish nations are still very, very important for all of us. But we must rightly divide and understand that Paul and his his uh, people that he begot, his spiritual sons that he begot, you know, Timothy and Barnabas and these guys, you know, they were a part of his group. And, you know, um, all of the scriptures that Paul has given unto us is for us to really pay attention to for our daily walk, for what we are called to be as Christians living under the grace period. And it's so important for us to understand this so that we're not being confused. Okay, so now we can clearly understand that Paul is our apostle. And, you know, the the New Testament, uh, it definitely starts in a time when Jesus was here in the flesh. And so that really gets mixed up a lot with us. And the New Testament was written after the Lord ascended to glory. Okay, so the reason why the New Testament starts where it does is because that's when the Greek, it was transferred to the Greek writings and was sent out to all nations. And the Old Testament was written in ancient Hebrew. And a lot of the Jewish people now will not even read the New Testament. But the reason we have to, we have to really get clear that the reason why God planned it like that was to reach the Gentiles. But when we don't put into context, you know, when Jesus was in the flesh, it was still under the law. He had to fulfill the law in its fullest completion when he died on the cross. That was the fulfillment of the law. Okay? And now we are, you know, they had a chance to accept the kingdom. But when they stoned Stephen, it went to Paul. And if you read the book of Acts, that's really where the transition is. And we really have to understand that the book of Acts is the transition, and the book of Romans, and all the books of Paul is where we should always start as Gentiles. Okay, and then we go back after and read the other stuff. We really have to understand that is the milk of the word. To start with Paul, that is the milk even though there's a lot of meat going on in all of those Gospels. <clears throat> Pardon me. But we must, must, especially the babes in Christ, understand that the milk of the Word must be ingested before you can go on meat. And there's so many babes in Christ right now who are are trying to digest a lot of meat, a lot of the rapture stuff, and a lot of the... Um, the book of Revelation and Daniel and all of these very meaty books that are, are very hard to digest if you don't rightly divide the word and, and get that milk daily. And it's so important. Now, it's funny that I mention Hebrews uh, because we are going to turn to Hebrews. And this just proves that we do have so much to gain from these other books. Okay, and Hebrews is one that a lot of people say Paul did write, but if he did write it, the reason why he didn't claim to write it is because the book of Hebrews <laughs> was to the Jewish people to clearly call them back to um to repentance in believing in Christ alone and his sacrifice and not of their dead works. Okay, so Hebrews nine fifteen through 16 reads, And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity, be the death of a testator. So we can clearly see here, the actual start of the New Testament was when Jesus died 
And when he came back and rose, we see that in Acts, the transition. So it's so important, so very important that we know that this, the start of a New Testament is when Jesus died and the new testator, the new, um, the new dispensation uh, is with Paul and the actual death of Jesus is when the New Testament starts. So clearly the Lord was not mistaken in when he placed the New Testament. Okay. But what I'm saying is, is that as Gentiles, it's hard for us to, to clearly understand where that line is. Okay. Now we're going to go to first Corinthians 15, one through four, because this is the gospel that saves today. There's so many people out there that throw out all the books of Paul and they go to the kingdom gospel. Okay. The kingdom gospel was to preach to the Jewish people that the kingdom was at hand. Okay. Now the gospel that saves right now in the New Testament, in the dispensation of grace, is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now let's read that together right now. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, not a gospel, the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand. That is power right there. We stand in, in faith on this gospel by which ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all, which is also I received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures. So this is 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Memorize it. When somebody comes to you and says, what is the gospel? Or if you are asking a preacher, a teacher of any kind, tell tell them, ask them, if you want to test them, to understand if they know the gospel that saves people's lives. It is not John 3.16, which I totally, absolutely love, okay? I'm not cutting down John 3.16, but there's nothing there regarding the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel that saves is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, okay? And, and a lot of people could also quote the Romans Road, okay? Romans 10, 9 through 13, absolutely, but this is the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's so important that we understand this. We understand this fully and completely because this is the gospel. We have to get to the people and we have to, to help them understand that Jesus died and was buried and rose again. And to all of those people who believe in that gospel, who believe in it with all their heart, but have a hard time with the rapture, understand that why would it be hard to believe that our bodies will be redeemed when Jesus is our example? He is the shepherd. He goes first. He died. He rose again. Okay? He is showing all the people who die in Christ they are going to have a glorified body. And yes, we will be transformed if we are lucky to be alive and remaining. Then we will not have to taste death. But all the people who are dead now, who died in Christ, will reclaim those bodies. So it's, it's so crucial and vital that we understand that the Lord has a glorified body, we will also have a glorified body on the day of redemption. All right, so we are close to wrapping up this, uh, this teaching. I want to make very clear that this is not uh, in any way to suggest that we do not read the rest of the Bible. Um, you know, God forbid that. I, uh, I want to get across that we absolutely... Uh, use every bit of the Bible to understand the will of God and how he used his chosen people to foreshadow so many of the things to come to in the future, uh, his son, Jesus Christ. And we also uh, get to know the Lord 
uh, Jesus Christ through the Word, because the Word is God, and God, um, as it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the w- Word was with God, and the Word was God. Also John 1.14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the gl- the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when we spend time in the Bible, all of the words in the Bible is Jesus, okay? He is with us. We are with him. We are in Christ, obviously, with the Holy Spirit. But when we read the Holy Scriptures, we are spending time with the Lord. We are Uh, ingesting that daily bread we are remembering him through the words through the scriptures you know and when you love someone you want to know them you want to understand their personality what they like what they're all about you know and god wants us to have a relationship with him that's why um christianity is the most um is the only religion, uh, is the only faith. Uh, I don't even want to say religion because it's not a religion. It's a, it's a relationship and the relationship that God wants to have with all of his creation. Okay. And every other, um, every other false God, it's about appeasing them. And, you know, the Lord is, um, obviously showing that, he wants us to have free will and he wants us to come to him. He wants us to seek him out. He is not uh, in the robot building business that obviously humans are in, involved in. Okay. He, yes, he wanted to make man in his image, but he wanted us to have freedom, freedom of choice to choose him or to choose hell. Okay, and, you know, for a lot of people who say, you know, God's mean for for making a place like hell. Well, he became flesh and died and took all of the punishment, paid our sin debt in full. You cannot show any more love than that. You cannot prove your love more than laying your life down. And he made a way for all people, all flesh, to spend eternity with him and to avoid hell. So God is just and fair in everything that he does. And when people go to hell, they're going there, unfortunately, because they are choosing to go to hell. We are all sinners and we all deserve it. We all have lied. We all have done something to break God's holy commandment. We were born into sin. We were born into the the sin nature. And even when we get saved, our soul is redeemed. Our spirit is, is seated in heavenly places, but we still have flesh that we have to fight every day. And so, but the thing is, is we were born into sin. Adam uh, gave us the debt of sin and Uh, The wages of sin is death, but Jesus took that death on the cross and paid it in full so that now we are part of his body. We are part of the eternal family in heaven. So if you guys haven't received the free gift of salvation, please, I, I beg you guys to receive the free gift of salvation. You have everything to gain and nothing to lose except for your soul, which is a lot to lose, actually. But you you have to understand that God made a way for you, and that's what, that's what this is all about, getting the information out there, you know, and, and, and teaching the Word of God to, to those of you who might be new and confused about the Word, and it's so important. So... This lesson, we're going to do an overview now. What have we learned? We must always rightly divide. We must understand the context. Jesus was originally only sent to the Jews. Paul is the only apostle that is sent to the Gentiles. Paul met with the others in Jerusalem and agreed to be the only one that, at that time. We still follow Christ and his teachings. Uh, we must read the scriptures understanding the context. We read all scriptures because the word of God is holy, uh, 
and is a form of God himself. So thanks, guys, for checking out this teaching. I really uh, I'm really appreciate you guys checking this out. And um, and I love all of you, and I thank you guys for coming. All of you who are listening to this that came to the first um, home church, uh, and to all of you who are coming next week, I look forward to... Uh, to hanging out with you and we have prayed for um all of you guys so if you guys have more prayer requests please uh send them in to contact bigbill at yahoo.ca and um you can leave me a message also in the comment section down below if you have any other um prayer requests and i just uh, want to say thanks again i love you and i'll talk to you soon peace be with you